This video is about sheet to tiller self steering. That is a way of getting a sailboat to hold a course relative to the wind using very little equipment. I'm going to first go over the theory, explain how this all works, and then show you how it's working on some boats. Sheet to tiller self steering is the most challenging method of self steering. Even more so than using a wind vane, it demands that the sails be balanced. That means the sails are trimmed so that the boat wants to stay on a straight course, not constantly trying to turn towards the wind or turn away from the wind. Now waves will tur still turn the boat, and the more the boat heels, the more the shape of the hull turns the boat towards the wind. With sheet to tiller, you're compensating for the effects of those waves and the effects of heel. You're not compensating for an unbalanced boat that always wants to turn one way or the other. You can only compensate for the waves and the heel. So if you make a sail change, that's going to change the sail balance. And you'll then need to adjust the sheet to tiller self steering. It takes effort to learn sheet to tiller. And it's definitely not as convenient as a wind vane and way less convenient than an autopilot that works. But with minimal equipment and no electricity, you can have self-steering under sail using sheet to tiller. When sheet to tiller is operating, as the boat turns toward the wind, the apparent wind, that is the wind that you feel on board, which is made up of both the true wind and the boat's speed and direction, that increases because the angle between the boat's heading and the true wind decreases. An increase in the apparent wind increases the force on the sails. That causes the force on the sheets to increase. That causes the control line to pull the tiller harder towards the wind. Pulling the tiller towards the wind turns the boat away from the wind. The boat turning away from the wind reduces the apparent wind. That's the wind we feel on board because the speed and direction don't add to the true wind speed as much. Less apparent wind reduces the force on the sails, which reduces the force on the sheets and on the control line. And now the elastic is stronger than the control line and the elastic, the bungee cord, pulls the tiller away from the wind. This causes the boat to turn towards the wind. This is relatively easy in theory, and I've exaggerated the angles in these diagrams. I will warn you that it took me many, many hours to learn how to do sheet to tiller. And after really learning how to do it, it generally takes two to ten minutes to set up sheet to tiller, and it needs to be adjusted after every sail change. It's a lot of work to do it, but it's a simple system with very little that can break. I have to emphasize that the boat must be balanced for this to work. Now let's look at how this works on some sailboats. First let's see how this looks on a folk boat sailing on a beam reach. Working on self-steering. So we've got on the leeward side this bungee cord attached to a little rope to give me a little more to get a little more length. Might adjust that later. On the windward side got a little snatch block here tied to the rail, because we've got this combing to get over. Our objective is to get our fair lead going to the tiller. Now we've got this rope, just any old piece of rope. Really, it just has to be long enough. So we're going to tie a rolling hitch on the main sheet. snatch plug to the inward side of the boat. Okay, the bungee cords on the leeward side. Take a look for traffic. Now I am going to tie this to the tiller.
Now, the exact place you tie to, well, that depends. That's one of those things you have to figure out. Let's start with this. Okay. And now, the bungee. Now, this does not, off the top of my head, this does not look right to me. I've tied the tiller too tight. figure this out. I just keep an eye on what folks are doing, what the tiller is doing. So, now we are much closer. We are still, we may be heading up slowly. We seem to be heading up slowly. Okay, so if we're heading up, that means the tiller is too far to the leeward side. So, we want to bring it more to the wind, turn the tiller to the windward side. adjust where this bungee cord is attached or we can take an extra turn around so we can make this this bungee cord stretched pre-stretched more which is going to cause it which is going to cause more force pulling the two tiller to leeward and turning the boat to leeward. and now right now we seem to be holding course so as soon as we want to change course we have to change all this okay that's it the downside of shooting the tiller. Or if we wanted to reef, we have to change all this. Uh. All right, so now we are on a broad reach on John's beautiful full coat and demonstrating sheet to tiller. Notice first that we pulled out the Genoa and the main has a preventer on it just in case, which is always a good idea. So the boat is being steered by this sheet to tiller rig. Now this is comprised of a bungee cord, this green bungee cord, which is trying to pull the tiller to the leeward side. The leeward side is here, where the main is on. It's, you can't easily tell, but the wind is from over here. <coughs> the bungee cord is always trying to pull the tiller to, to, le to leeward, which is going to turn the boat to windward. That's what the bungee cord is always gonna do. Counteracting that force, we have this control line, now this control line is just tied to the tiller with a rolling hitch, goes to this turning block on the windward side, and all that's really important about this turning block is that it pulls the tiller in the right direction, so that's why it's, it's attached to this little rope that I tied through the rail. Then the control line goes up to the main sheet, and it's trying to deflect the main sheet. It's not trying to actually be a main sheet, so we only want to go around one of the turn parts of the main sheet. So the more, the more we go towards the wind, the higher the apparent wind, the more force on the sail. The more force on the sail, the more force on the sheet. The more force on the sheet, the more it wants to, def to straighten out instead of being deflected. That pulls the tiller to windward, which turns the boat to leeward. So it's, it's these two opposing the bungee cord that's always trying to turn the boat into the wind by turning the, the tiller to leeward versus the control line, which the farther the boat goes to windward, the greater the force on it and the more the tiller, it's trying to turn the tiller to take the boat away from the wind. It takes a lot of messing around to get these all correct. I mean, this is not a, there's nothing measured here. It's estimates and then you adjust this, you adjust the position of the rolling hitch, you adjust how much, how closely you've tied this uh, round turn two half hitches around the tiller. You may take another turn with the bungee cord here, I've got it attached there. There's a whole bunch of adjustments to make until you get this right. And it's all a matter of trial and error. And as soon as you change the, as soon as you reef a sail or change the course, you, you start again. You're going to have to set this up again. So there's a lot of work involved 
to get sheet to tiller working, but it requires almost no equipment. Now, it would be better on this boat if I had thought to bring another block, which would be like somewhere around here. Then we could be deflecting the main sheet. More of a deflection. Here, we got a little bit of it. It's almost trying to be the main sheet from this lead. It would be better if, if somehow it was coming over here and then going to this turning block. We still need this turning block right, uh, right at 90 degrees to the tiller so that we pull it direct, correct direction on the tiller. Otherwise, we're going to tent if we had the, only a block up here, which would give a better lead for the main sheet with a single block, then we're going to always be trying to pull the, the rope up along the, the tiller and it's not going to work. So it, it, it kind of you kind of have to have a turning block perpendicular to the tiller. And on this boat, it would be better if we had a second turning block to make this work on a broad reach. You can do this on any, you can use the jib, the Genoa or the jib as well as the main. You don't have to use the main, but it all works the same, except that on this boat, it's, it was easier for the way the leads worked to use the main. Uh, it, we could go here, but then it's going to come across the cockpit combing, which is going to add friction, which is you want to avoid friction in the, the system. The, you want a non-stretch line. The better the block it is, the better. And I, you want to avoid any ex any friction. It's just going to make it harder for this to do the job. But we have the boat self-steering using one block, one bungee cord, uh, a few pieces of rope. Blur. Before I show you another example of sheet to tiller under sail, I'll just have this labeled picture of sheet to tiller set up on a Grampian 26. It would be better if I used a longer elastic, a longer bungee cord than I did in this picture, but it happened to be the only bungee cord I had on the boat when I decided to set up sheet to tiller and happened to take a picture of it. It worked, but a longer one, which gave more travel, would be better. And now, here is sheet to tiller as set up on my 15 meter schooner Isuma in the middle of the North Atlantic. Got sheet to tiller steering. That's what the tiller here. And this line goes to that block, which goes to this sheet here of the mainsail, the main sheet. And then there's a bungee cord, this blue bungee cord and they alternate to steer the boat relative to the wind and it works really well in light wind it works well generally but that wind vane works is an easier thing to use but it doesn't work in really light wind so it's not in use right now that wind vane when the waves are shaking the wind out of our sails a bit there but that spinnaker just keeps pulling it's the first sail to fill when it's really light, so it gives us some motion and then the other sails fill a little better. This is a picture with all the lines labeled of sheet to tiller steering as set up on my schooner Asuma. To review, I've shown you the theory of sheet to tiller self-steering and some demonstrations of using it on different boats. Sheet to tiller self-steering is a great system for self-steering using minimal equipment and no electricity. It's worked for me on all the boats I've tried it on, in all the winds I've tried it in, and I think it'll work on any sailboat with a tiller that can get the sails balanced. Wind vanes and autopilots are definitely easier to use, and if you're on a boat that has them, great, though I'd still encourage learning sheet to tiller as a backup method. I find sheet to tiller is better in light winds than my wind vane on a Suma. But I will note that commercial wind vanes often have better bearings than homemade wind vanes like mine. So wind vanes with lower friction bearings will steer the boat in lighter winds than wind vanes with not as low friction bearings. As far as resources for learning sheet to tiller, I used both John Letcher's very thorough self-steering for sailing craft, unfortunately long out of print, which I read many years ago, and Jerome Fitzgerald's Wind and Tide, which has no pictures, but from which I really learned the point about heel affecting course and was encouraged to keep trying until I got it. If you find this video useful, please like it or leave a comment and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel, Schooner Asuma, 
and checking out my website, www.assuma.com.